Okay, so um, yeah, let's um, we can get going now. That's great. Um, so welcome uh, uh, everybody. Um, good morning, Morada and Kroiso. Welcome to this Green and Safe Spaces Network workshop. Um, whose idea was this to hold it on a Monday morning? Um, I think uh, I'm sure it will be um, a good well-being boost for us though, and get us get us you know get us going for the for the, this Monday morning. And it will be you know great for us to hear about all the amazing work across Newport. Um, so hopefully you can see the screen okay. I've just shared my screen now. Um, so yeah, for those new to the network, I'm I'm Harriet Bleach. I'm the Karina Safe Engagement Officer. Uh, I've spoken to most of you now, I think, but there could be some new people on the on the call today. Um, but I work across Natural Resources Wales and the Newport City Council to to deliver the Green and Safe Spaces theme of the um, Newport Wellbeing Plan. Uh, so this network has sort of shared goals and, and is key to delivering that uh, green and safe spaces theme. Um, so overall, it's about facilitating lots of sort of partnership work and connecting people with green space and nature, enhancing green space, uh, you know, and championing the many many benefits as well as looking at some of the barriers and sort of safety issues um, that that can occur in green spaces like social behaviour. Um, so just a little bit um, about. You know the workshop today would really really keen for you to sort of interact and network as much as possible um if you can start popping your name and your role in the chat bar um that'd be great especially new people and also introduce yourself when you open up your mic um if you have to have your camera on that's great no worries if you don't um obviously happy good to see everybody's faces but no pressure if you prefer to have the camera off um Perhaps best just to keep your microphones on mute during the sort of this presentations and, and speakers today, if that's okay. And um, but yeah, encourage you all to open, uh, ask questions uh, in the question and answer sections. Sort of be interactive, use the chat function, uh, and raise the hand uh, uh, function as well, uh, and just get stuck in. Um, there's also another thing that I found out the other day about when you hover over the um, uh, raise your hand function, you can always there's sort of live reactions as well. You look like a little thumbs up or an applaud, or you know, if anyone's particularly funny today, or you can sort of press that to sort of it's a little bit more interactive, sort of while the speakers are speaking. If you you know, if you'd like to use those as well. Um, okay, so in terms of the agenda today, so this slide is just about the the vision of green safe spaces. Uh, you know, it's about Newport having healthy, thriving ecosystems. All communities feel connected to nature, have easy access to safe, quality, green and blue space for health, well-being, play and recreation. Um, so the, the agenda today, we've got a few speakers. Uh, we've got Morgan Nichols talking about Woodland Roots to Wellbeing project. Uh, we've got a slight change to the plan today. Um, uh, South Wales Fire and Rescue weren't able to make it, but they hope to come to the next one. Um, but we've got Living Streets, Laura from Living Streets is going to talk to us about uh, more about that uh, charity and the walks and the community street audit. We've got uh, Bug Life, uh, Claire from Bug Life here and talking about the potential Newport uh, pollinator project. Uh, and then we've got Newport Live talking about all the activity they've been doing in green spaces and parks um, over the summer. And then we're just going to look at any other support that might be needed from the network, any barriers you're coming up against that other people from the network might be able to help with. Uh, and any, you know, for example, comms and engagement support that might be needed as well. And then any other projects uh, or updates around the table. And, and we'll just look at what you'd like to see at the next workshop as well, perhaps. Um, so last time we fitted in, tried to fit in quite a lot. It's probably a bit too, too much. So this time I've given a lot of uh, time for um, all the presentations and all the question and answer sections because um, that, that's what it's all about really just making those connections and, and networking um, so yeah the focus today is on learning about different projects um, groups and organizations and um, an opportunity to join up on similar projects that you have uh, sort of share knowledge uh, you know throughout these sort of valuable conversations that hopefully will come to, uh, you know, after the talks and things today. Um, so, so last time, yeah, we tried to cover, we covered, a, uh, you know, what we'd like to see at the next workshop. So we look, this time I've tried to incorporate and factor in some of those things that you wanted last time today. 
uh, as I said, slight change of plan with Southfield, South Wales Fire and Rescue Service not being able to make it due to unforeseen circumstances, but they are keen to get your um, views on the proposed trackway for the for the river to enable them to more easily rescue people from the river. So that'll either be the next workshop or I'll send something out by by email. Um, so just some other ideas that you suggested last time. There's been some progress in the background, so I'll just update you on those really quickly. Um, so green prescribing, we've we've as mentioned as a topic to explore last time, but we've we've kind of set up a subgroup um, since the last workshop in April. We've met twice with sort of providers of activities like Kai Kale and Gwent Nightlife Trust, for example, just to explore uh, how people uh, are referred to them currently and what would be needed for a formal green prescription service. We also presented to GPs and health colleagues to sort of gauge interest and and what they might need and what they would you know like to see from a formal green prescription um, service. Uh, so we're now aiming to look at this sort of Gwent wide and really keen to learn from a pilot that's taking place in Caerphilly. So we'll look at that sort of Gwent wide approach and yeah, we'll definitely I'll keep you up to date on that. Uh, the, the next thing, the, the green, we've got a green infrastructure map we've had created, but we're, we're still uploading it onto the uh, Newport Council systems. But once that's uh, ready to go, I can share a bit more information about it uh, and how we could use it as a, as a network, perhaps, but also maybe set up a subgroup to explore how to get that information sort of public and more easily accessible, uh, you know, in an easy way to use. And just lastly, um, you mentioned last time about exploring inclusion and diversity in green spaces uh, and embedding sort of core quality principles in our you know, green and safe spaces objectives. So just need a little bit more time to maybe organise a speaker um, at the next workshop. Um, but we could also try and see if there's anyone sort of local to talk about, uh, you know, lived experience on the topic. But, if, you know, if you've got any ideas or if you know anybody um, who would like to talk about that that topic um, and get involved please do do let me know um, so but in the meantime on that topic we are looking at doing an equality impact assessment on the whole green and safe work uh, and so Marius from the health board is looking at a research paper on on unequal access to green spaces which could produce some some recommendations and also I think Kai Kiel have done as part of some of their work have done uh, I think a report looking at some of the barriers to using green spaces. So that's that's you know things we could talk about perhaps next time. So right, that's enough from me. I'll just stop sharing my screen, and we'll go on to the next uh, first speaker. So a first presentation today is about uh, Woodland Roots to Wellbeing, uh, an update on all the sort of wonderful things that that they're doing. They've been doing over the last uh, maybe. Uh, six months to a year and uh, I'll now hand over to Morgan Nichols, uh, project coordinator, to tell us a bit more. Um, so hope Morgan, hopefully Morgan's on the call. So um, over to you Morgan if that's okay. Yeah I'm here just trying to get you to be able to see my screen now. Let's have a look. Um, I'll just do it on that one. There we go. Can you see the screen okay? Because obviously I can't see it now. Yes. Yeah cool. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm Morgan Nichols. I'm the project coordinator for Woodland Roots to Wellbeing, um, which is a seven-year project in sort of Dufferin area to try and improve the sort of green spaces. Um, so it's funded by the lottery on a sort of seven-year funding um, sort of stream, which is quite unusual because usually projects are usually about three years, um, but it's given sort of time to really have the impact um, across the area. So Dufferin Community Link, who sort of I'm employed by, is the lead partner. And then we've got um, Keep Whilst Tidy, um, Growing Space and the National Trust then that sort of make up the partnership to run the project. Um, so we're currently, we just finished our fourth year. So we've got another three years left on the project. Um, so even though we've kind of had, you know, a bit of a stop where it comes to sort of COVID and everything, we've still got enough time to sort of get it together and sort of keep delivering really, which is really, really good. Um, so the sort of one part of the project then is um, Rabbit Hill Community Woodland, um, which we do in partnership with Keep Whilst Tidy. So we run weekly volunteering sessions within the woodlands. Um, so at the beginning of the project, the woods was it's about an acre and a half. It was um, completely overgrown. We've got a lot of invasive species such as like laurel 
Um, there was about, I think there was about six burnt out cars in there as well. Um, and it just basically been a forgotten place. There was a lot of um, antisocial behaviour and all that kind of thing going on in there. Um, so we've, like I said, we started doing obviously the volunteering sessions now. Um, that's been going really, really well, especially sort of coming out of, well, I say coming out of COVID, coming out of sort of the restrictions. Um, we've managed to do a really good recruitment drive. So we've got quite a lot of volunteers now attending every week. Um, as you can see sort of on the slide, we've, we're building sort of steps for some of the sort of less accessible areas, some log circles to get a sort of more engagement within the area and then um, building things like bird boxes and bat boxes just to try and um, you know encourage more wildlife in the area as well. Um, we're currently in the process as well of looking to put in a disabled access route going through the woodlands because um, we are quite close to sort of an older people's home um, and they haven't got any way of accessing at the moment because obviously it's just not very accessible so that's sort of something we're working on at the moment. Part of then our sort of Thursday sessions as well is tackling a lot of the fly tipping um, and sort of burnt out litter as well that we get in the woodlands and around the edge of the woodlands. Obviously different, um, you know, it is a deprived area. We are sort of in the middle of a housing estate effectively. Um, so we will have quite a lot of, we have a combination of sort of industrial use dumped um, to household waste that are just household bags with the majority of stuff in there recycling and then things like nappies and everything that they just decide to set fire to, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, we try and break it up with the session with the guys. They kind of accept at the beginning of every session, we're going to go and do a bit of litter picking. Um, and then we sort of break it up with sort of different bits and pieces then as well. Um, the other part we've got to it then is working with our partner Growing Space, a mental health charity. Um, so we've got the laundry over at Tradiga House, which is a community allotment space. Um, there's a combination sort of partner of um, participants and volunteers that get involved with this. So we have um, some volunteers there a couple of days a week sort of planning things and everything. And we have some participants come through from Growing Space um, which have all got um, either additional learning needs or mental health needs and they attend their kind of on a well-being basis then. Um, there's lots of sensory plants in the area as well. So there's a lot of um, different smells, different textures to really make it like a really, really chilled, nice, relaxing space. Um, next to that, then we've got the laundry as well, which uh, the laundry, I'm just talking about the laundry. We've got the garden of tranquility then, um, which is lovely. It's such a lovely, quiet space. We put some hedgehog boxes in there as well, which are being used. And that's quite a nice space to just go and sort of, you know, do a bit of meditation, come and have a bit of a chill for five, that kind of thing. And we have different other groups um, using that within the area as well, which is lovely. And then the other part of it then is we've got our open access play sessions. Um, so they run by our um, play team that are under Dufferin Community Link. Um, we do these across sort of the area. So we have some that are actually done in the woods now that that's up to a level where we can sort of have those safely in there, which is amazing because they get involved in like climbing trees. And obviously in the picture, they sort of part of the hill, we'll chuck a load of water down there and get all the kids to slide down on there, which they absolutely love. Um, then we also do another session then by Tradiga Park Primary School, which is a primary school based next to next door to us. And then we also do some in Tradiga House then on a Saturday morning, which has been really good. Um, and we do get a really good wide range of sort of kids attending. Um, the ages are four to 14. Um, we sort of we're mainly from about sort of like age five to six up to about a sort of 11, 12. But then we work with our youth team as well, based at Dufferin Community Link, who sort of we still have that continual relationship with the sort of kids that have engaged with us through that time, which is really good. Um, so you can see kind of on a map of we are all all of the parts of the project are really, really tight space. Um, so as you can see, the woodlands there on um, the sort of lower right hand side. Um, obviously, the play sessions, then they're quite close space as well. And then obviously the laundry. So it's all within walking distance. You know, we are really lucky um, in Dufferin, the fact that we have got so much green space. Um, a lot of it has been forgotten about, admittedly, um, but people are sort of coming over to that. I think through sort of the various lockdowns and stuff, I think people have really started to value green spaces and realising that, you know, you can just go out and have a walk and, you know, just look at nature around you to sort of make you feel a bit better than really. Um, so something we've been able to do sort of from the summer term just gone, which was really, really good because we were able to go in the schools again. Um, so we did some Woodland Warrior taster sessions with year three, four and five. Um, so that was so we did like three sessions a week, basically through the, through the, the summer term with them. 
Um, it was really, really enjoyed because, to be honest, they've not been able to obviously go out and do anything. They've not been able to have any school trips or anything like that either. So it was really, really good to get them out and about, get them in the woods. Some of them never been in the woods before. Um, some of them had, but it'd been a long time ago. Um, so a lot of the sessions we did with them was we did um, like an activity around sort of recyclable products and how th how long things take to decompose and then link that into obviously some of the rubbish we actually find in the woods as well. Uh, we did a litter pick with them as well, which was really good. Um, just going around the estate, just sort of having a chat to them and being able to put this all learning into practice that we'd gone through them on the previous session. Um, then we did some sort of um, sort of bushcraft activities with them, making different ones, making kind of elder bracelets. And then their final one, which was they were the ones they were all looking forward to, was uh, making s'mores and everything on the barbecue, which was great. And obviously we went through some fire safety and everything with them as well. Because um, some of the kids obviously we were engaging with, we kind of know there's some of the ones that are actually setting fires in there and everything. So to be able to sort of engage with them and have a conversation with them about the safe way to do things, it's just kind of informing them now for the future and hopefully they make a bit better decisions moving forward, really. Um, so it was really, really good to sort of keep that partnership going with the school. Um, sort of from September onwards, we are going to be running Woodland Warriors, but in a different format. So there's going to be um, 12 kids that are going to be from years five and six. Um, they're going to put themselves forward to sort of be part of that. And it will sort of be within, um, within the school time. Um, and what they will be doing is they'll be helping us to decide what they actually want to put in the woods. We're going to be doing different activities with them, different planting. So they can really start to take ownership of the woodland themselves as well. Um, so we're in the process of getting all that sorted and getting them all recruited on for that as well, which would be good. Um, another bit that we've done sort of in addition to sort of the project or a bit of a sideline was we've got Nightingale Court, um, which is the sort of old people's housing complex, the other side of the woods. Um, they obviously they do sort of the garden themselves. Um, but obviously with the mobility and things like that, they were able to do some sort of some of the bigger jobs. Um, so obviously we went and worked with Growing Space. Growing Space provided us all the plants, which they'd grown on site at Tradiga House. And then some of our volunteers then um, went and sort of tidied their garden up for them, did a lot of weeding, planted some, you know, good, because they had like quite a dark corner in there. So we made sure we sort of planted some plants in there that were really going to thrive. And that was really lovely. We even had um, one of the ladies like chucking us down an ice cream from a window above as well after we'd finished, which was really lovely. And it was nice to just get out and about and everything and actually be able to sort of do stuff for the community again, really. And then we did get involved as well then with Spring Clean Cymru with Keep Wells Tidy. Um, so this was back in, I want to say June, possibly July. Um, I think it was June. Um, so that was really, really good. We were hoping to have a lot of people from the community get involved um, and sort of help out on the litter pick and potentially get a litter picking group from that. Um, but unfortunately, that sort of didn't come to fruition. Um, it was good, though. So we still took out um, different community links, child care team um, and all the kids that they had sort of within their holiday club. And then we also went out with um, different community links, youth um, provision that they had on through the half term as well I managed to get all them out so that's a slightly bigger age group and that was really enjoyable as well so as much as it, it wasn't kind of the event that we thought it was going to be kind of getting the community involved all the kids had an amazing time um, and as you can see from the photos we did get quite a lot of bags as well which was really good um, so that's kind of it that's kind of what we've been kind of doing um, sort of through yeah sort of through the last sort of six months or so everything's been kind of bubbling along up until this point really um, but the last six months, we've been able to actually get out within the community and do bits and pieces. Um, we've then got a community event now coming up on the 25th of this month, um, which will be within the Woodlands. And that'll kind of bring a lot of the projects together, so a lot of parts of the project together. So the plating will be out doing some bits and pieces. Um, then we'll have, um, we're going to have some seed bombs going on as well, make some bird boxes um, and just really get people involved and sort of get a bit of community, uh, community feedback from them as well of kind of like, you know what changes they would like to see if they've noticed the kind of changes and things like that really um so yeah i'm open for any questions thanks yeah. Morgan. that's great thank you um is there any any questions from anyone at all i'll just give it a few minutes right. to think i don't know how i'm up at the moment I'm trying to get back onto oh, i can't get onto anything now 
Kathy just mentioned in the chat about some useful um, wildlife trash resources for climate change. So lesson, is it lessons for seven to 11 year olds? Is that right, Kathy? Yeah, I think they could go higher as well. I tried them out on our warriors this week and they it's it's quite complex, but I just wondered if um, you could use them with your woodland warriors. It might be useful, some of the resources in it. Just have a quick look at it. Yeah, no, definitely. No, it looks really good. Thank you. And they're very practical. You know, it's like the food shape, food web games and things like that, just to link it in with what they're seeing and achieving and planting. It's just taking it an extra step to get that um, uh, thing to connect to nature. But if you want me to come and run some of those, let me know or, or yeah. you know, facilitate them. I'd be very happy to do that. So. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, when we get them sort of set up, when I've got some of the session dates and everything, I'll give you a bell and yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Morgan. That's great. Thanks, Morgan. Um, is um so the the event on the twenty fifth? Would you like um you know us to sort of promote that, or is there any? Yeah, that'd be amazing. I can get the um sort of flyer forwarded over to you and everything. Also, yeah. put it on our social media channels as well and stuff. But yeah, that'd be great if you could. Yeah, great. So if um yeah, if you pop it over to me after, I'll I'll share it with the network if we can support in that way that would be great to do um so we've got um joe gossage with a hand up if you'd like to come in yes please thanks harriet um hi morgan um we've got we're gearing up at the moment it's a bit far in the future but we're gearing up for a big um plant sale type event next spring at tradiga park okay and, um just wanted to sort of mention it to you and any of the other partners on here because i from what I could see, you might want to sort of do a bit of a promotional thing or maybe get the community geared up to um, making, I don't know, the bee bombs or whatever you're talking, because we're going to invite lots of different uh, um, companies and little independent growers and things like that. So it is a commercial thing as well as like a community thing, but it would be good to have a, you know, an extension into the community and growing spaces if they, is anybody on from growing spaces? I don't know if they're on the uh, meeting yeah, today, happens. but yeah, I will be trying to connect in with them and get them to perhaps come along as well. So just giving you a bit of a heads up there. And if you want to sort of discuss it, um, if you can give me a shout and I'll put you in touch with the parks team that are arranging it. Okay. Yeah, that would be amazing. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank Joe, you. have you for that? Sorry, what was that? Sorry. Sorry, Joe. Have you got a date for that yet? We haven't got a date. We're looking. We're looking around about the Easter break time, so you know April time. So, we but we haven't got a firm date yet. Sorry. We should actually get this. <laughs> yeah, but it will. Yeah, it, we talked to Cardiff Plant Fairs, and it's it's going to be round about the. Um, sort of the weekend weekend after Easter probably around about that sort of time when everyone's like up and doing their gardens and wanting to do things and yeah great See you the winter yeah that's it thank you um I just had one question Morgan before we move on I just wondered how it was in terms of like obviously all the restrictions like how you sort of managed to navigate all of that <laughs> it's been fun um yeah it's not been too bad to be honest obviously when we've been you know the, the majority of the time it's quite good because a lot of our stuff is outdoors um a lot of the volunteering sessions we still managed to go for the majority of the time the, there has been sort of right at the beginning of the original lockdown obviously yeah nobody was out um and around christmas time we did have to sort of close down i think it's like about two months we couldn't have any volunteers on site um which was you know it was frustrating, but we had kind of uh, myself and Matt from Keep Wells Tidy. We were still going out every Thursday, keeping on top of stuff in the woods and just kind of doing a bit more of the mundane stuff, ready for obviously for the volunteers to come back. Um, we're still keeping in contact with them, having the odd like Zoom catch up as well. Um, with our play provision, that was slightly different. So play obviously is allowed to continue even when it happens with lockdowns. Obviously, you know, we did think obviously having open access when we'd have up to 30 kids there wasn't really probably the best idea. So what we did was the play team did some targeted play um, sessions with sort of family groups and sibling groups, and that was received really, really well. So we worked with the youth team um, and on our knowledge of the kids that we engage and sort of worked out, you know, which kids would kind of really benefit from it. 
um, and worked in conjunction with the school as well and getting sort of recommendations of the kids that they knew kind of would need really really benefit from something like that um, and that did really well um, so we'd have like a couple of sessions a day the days they were doing it so we were able to keep in touch with those kids and still able to give them that really like chilled relaxing time where they can just like mess about and just be kids um because a lot of them come from sort of quite you know not necessarily great sort of family backgrounds and stuff that have got a lot of resources to support them so that was really beneficial um but yeah so it, it, we were still able to kind of do bits and pieces but yeah obviously it's, it's good now that we've pretty much got everything all back on track like it was which is great yeah definitely okay thank you for that um Suzanne Maddox just put in the chat about you know if you need any help with the volunteers um there's a few contacts there Claire and uh Medjabeen uh from Gavo just you know if that's uh, helpful um great thank you Morgan so we'll just um if there's no more questions if you do have any questions obviously just put them in the chat we can ask a bit later but we'll just move on to the uh, next uh, speaker now. So we've got uh, we've got uh, Laura, who's kindly sort of stepped in <laughs> uh, from Living Streets, um, and uh, Laura's just going to tell us more about the work of the charity uh, and about some weekly walks that are in Pill and about a community street audit. So over to you, Laura, if that's okay. Lovely, thanks, Harriet. Um, you're all going to have to suffer with my face or look at something else because I haven't got a presentation. Um, so, just to introduce myself, my name's Laura Service. I'm a white, non disabled woman in my 40s with short, short brownish blonde hair. I'm a project coordinator at Living Streets um, and I've been with the charity for about four years now. I've got a background in kind of heritage education um, and I've been working a lot with schools within the Bristol area. I'm actually based in Bristol, but I'm now been working for a couple of years now over on a project in uh, South Wales. Um, and uh, Living Streets, how many of you are sort of familiar with the charity Living Streets? Um, just as a quick overview, uh, we're a walking charity, a charity for what we call everyday walking. So I kind of like to think of it as there's, there's two arms of Living Streets. There's one that's the campaigning side and one that's the um, behaviour change side. So our absolute core is our campaigning. So we campaign against pavement parking. Uh, currently got a campaign in Wales at the moment supporting the government in uh, their negotiations about the 20 mile an hour um, change, so the, the change from 30 to 20 mile an hour in residential streets. So I urge you to go onto the Living Streets website if you're interested in supporting that and signing and we will continue to campaign on your behalf. Um, and then our behaviour change work is across lots of different age groups our flagship program is with something called wow walk to school where we work with schools uh, all over the uk now um, where the children are encouraged to actively travel to school and if they do so enough then they earn a badge at the end of every month and they have they collect the badges the badges are designed by children for children they're made from yogurt pots that have been sort of uh, collected out of landfill um, so really trying to think about all the different aspects of of the work we do in terms of sustainability and our impact on the environment um, and the badges they're collecting this year is focusing each month on elements of, of climate change as well to really help the children to understand what behaviours they can take in order to further protect the environment. Um, other behaviour change work is some of the work really that we're doing in Wales, which is a project called Walking Friends Wales. And that is funded by the Healthy and Active Fund, which is a partnership between Welsh Government, Sports Wales and Public Health Wales. Um, and it's great to see some familiar faces on this on this call. So that's really lovely um, who I have made contact with because I've been working on this project only for about eight weeks. Um, so it's been hit the ground running and trying to meet as many people as possible. Mostly that means, um, as I said, I'm based in Bristol, but once a week, so I'm, I'm in a one day week on this project, so I head over to Newport and spend quite a bit of time just being in pill and sitting on street corners and chatting to people and meeting people and finding out what their what they're interested in, whether they want to go for walks, what might stop them from going on walks, who would be interested in going on walks. 
um, because this project is focusing on encouraging more people over the age of 50 to be going on regular walks. That's our purpose. Um, we are setting up walks. I'm setting up walks in the area of Pill. Uh, you may ask why Pill? Uh, I had uh, when I first started the project, I thought, right, I'm just going to look at all the community hubs in Newport and gave them all a call. So if any of you work in other, any other community hubs, um, please do get in contact. Um, so uh, Pill Community Hub answered the telephone and were just really enthusiastic, very supportive of it, went along, had a meeting. It was absolutely brilliant, really wonderful team there. Um, so we start our walks from Pill Community Centre on Wednesdays and they have put on free tea and coffee and we can use their facilities and then we'll head out from there. So they're very much local walks and they are designed for the group. So it just depends on who turns up for the walk and, um, and where we go. So it might be that we uh, go down to the river. Quite often we'll just go down to the river and go for a walk along there. Um, or we'll be going up to Bellevue Park. Um, through making contacts with various people and through networks just like this been absolutely invaluable because I've met people who, uh, as a lady who works on the Transporter Bridge and she has given us a tour of the Transporter Bridge. She also brought in a colleague of hers who could talk about the wildlife in the area and the impact of the river on the wildlife. So that was really interesting. Um, and also we got to go up into town to go and um, learn about the new shopping arcade that's being, well not the new new shopping arcade, the old shopping arcade, second oldest in Wales, uh, that's being redeveloped, um, restored I should say. Um, so we had a tour of that which was absolutely fascinating. Um, so it's really just an opportunity to encourage more people uh, local within the area of Pill to join us on regular walks to um, generally most of them come to meet new people. Um, I was quite keen that post pandemic or as we're starting to as, yeah, as Morgan says as restrictions are reducing and uh, as we're kind of unfurling from this whole isolation period to start building up confidence in going back out to the pharmacy going to collect your shopping really starts to sort of take back independence. Um, and yeah, meet, meet new people, build confidence. Um, it's very much about co-collaboration. So the group decide where we want to go the following week. I will do as a walk leader, I'll do recce's of various areas around pill, risk assessments, those sorts of things. And I tend to have two or three walks up my sleeve so that I can kind of try and put it to the group as much as possible where they'd like to walk um because it's it's really up to them it's for them um so that's where we're at the moment and leading on from that we'll be hosting a training for to train up people within the community to become walk leaders so within all of your networks whether you know of people who uh, may want to become walk leaders. This is something that we'll be running in October. Um, we've also a colleague of mine works over in Newport, uh, sorry, over in Cardiff. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So we'll be running the training over in Cardiff as well as Newport. And that's looking like that's going to happen in October. Probably should have a date for that. I feel like it's the 13th. Um, and that will be a combination of online and physical um just testing out the best way really for people to feel confident doing it for us it's very important that if we can get people in a room that would be really uh beneficial to the training um and obviously it's a lead walk training so we will be doing a walk uh, as part of that training and following on from that we'll also be doing a community street audit so a community street audit is something that living streets um, have done for many years we work with the community and to try and find out what barriers they face to walking in a specific area and what improvements can be made. So this is, um, we will recruit members from the community. So in this case, we'll use the walking group and any other communities, uh, people that we've sort of come into contact with. So. Um, due to I think because of partly because of kind of this unfurling of the isolation, some people haven't 
been able to join us on walks not felt like it was the right thing for them at the moment but they're also but they are keen to feed into the community street audit so we'll have a pool of people who will decide where that community street audit should happen what roads should be included what areas should be included and then we will i will lead an event two events probably and physical events on the ground will go around and we'll have sort of a bit of a checklist and lots of chats at specific areas as to what those problems might be that they face in that area um, and then uh, and improvements that can be made. I'll then write that report up and then that is shared with Newport City Council and any other um, organisations who might be able to feed into some of those improvements. So it could be keep wells tidy, it could be also, I mean I'm quite new to the to this specific area and I get a sense that there are a lot of groups and organisations and charities that could uh, feed into this. I've mentioned it to Pill Community Centre and they've already uh, flagged a couple of projects that are happening at the time, like Safer Streets projects are happening in Pill, um, <clears throat> which quite a few of you are probably aware of. Um, throw water on my face. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So I guess my um, call to action or uh, so to speak would be if you know people who would benefit from joining our walk, that would be lovely. I've got a quote here that was given to me that um, has the person who's given this quote has said that I can share it at this meeting and I thought it was a really nice way of encapsulating kind of what this is because we go on these walks, we've done eight of them. Um, this person's been with us for all eight of them and you don't really know how they're going. We just go for a walk for about an hour once a week and we just have a lovely time and that's really the baseline of it. We just, just put everything else aside and just have a really nice time. So she has said, the walks have helped me to get out and about after lockdown when I got out of the habit of walking. And now I walk most days for at least 30 minutes. Some walks I've built up to four miles, but on flat terrain. They have given me the incentive to reread the history of Newport, e.g. about Bellevue Park, certainly help my well-being too. So that was just really lovely to receive and very reassuring that we are you know, along the right track and um, to, to build on on our walks and to continue them and continue to try and share them. Our numbers are very small at the moment. Uh, we are quite keen to have small groups so that people feel comfortable in the space. Obviously we are outside, but um, pavements are only you know 80 centimetres wide and in places. So we're not it's strictly socially distancing is a very challenging thing to do. Um, so we were quite keen to keep them small so that people felt comfortable. Um, but we have uh, about three regular walkers, so it'd be really nice to to increase those numbers if we uh, if there is uh, appetite for them. And we do keep mainly in Pill, so it is you know, along the river in Bellevue Park, going past the surgery and the shops and all of those elements. And for me, it's really important about uh, the sense of place because I was quite conscious at the beginning of this project. I thought, well, people have potentially lived in pill all their lives and know every single inch of it and walking in pill once a week is not something that would be of any interest. Um, there was another thought that I had which was that people would have been in isolation potentially for the last 16, 18 months and feel it's very comfortable remaining in isolation at home. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, so those two were my main barriers really to be aware of. So I'm quite keen to remain in the area, continue to talk about going on walks and gradually tease a few people out. And those who have come and are, you know, are they're all local to Pill, um, have said things like, oh, I've never, never really looked at this bit of Bellevue Park. Uh, I've never really been to this corner. I thought I'd spent a lot of days in Bellevue Park when so-and-so was in hospital and I used to walk her every single day but um, yeah so it is really nice how we are seeing areas of pill that they didn't know and meeting new people and, and sharing different experiences that people have had in pill as well has been been really rich so it's been lovely. I think I've probably witted enough Harriet.
that's thank brilliant. you all thank for you listening <laughs> no, that's brilliant thank you so much for that I mean it, they sound like the walks you know they cover so many things you know bringing the community together it's all about the history culture and you know nature and if you're in the park and the river and everything they sound they sound really really good so um yeah if anyone uh, has got any questions please do uh, raise your hand now or you know if anybody knows uh, of other people um as Laura mentioned, can, can benefit from these walks or would like to do the the training, the become become walk leaders, please do uh, let us know. I don't know if Laura, you can pop your email in the chat if you haven't already. You may have. Um, there's a few few comments in terms of uh, Suzanne's just said uh, would love to catch up with you. Um, support a wide range of organisations, um, supporting people um, over 50. With diverse needs so Suzanne's popped her email in the chat there. Jo from Pobble Housing has just um, also mentioned she works with several over 55 communities uh, would like to sort of uh, catch up with you about that as well. Yeah, um, um, Jo there's someone else I've spoken to in Pobble which is the name is let me just quickly Samantha Howes. Yeah Sam is my line manager yeah. Well, yeah so, okay so, so yeah if, if you've already heard from her then um that's you know another thumbs up then isn't it that i'm thinking along the right lines then it's going to be supported by um management so that's really good yeah lovely okay thank you and i'll catch up with you too suzanne thank you that's great thank you both um just to say um joanna suzanne just mentioned about it's a it's a really nice way to get feedback from people um rather than a survey obviously just chatting to people on the walk uh, it's a much more sort of pleasant and yeah organic way of get, engaging with with people. So that's um, yeah, it was it was a tricky one because we've got these we've got some questions we wanted to ask our walkers after a few weeks, and um, and I emailed them four questions just to see how we're doing, what could be improved, um, has it made a not I don't know what was it not has it made any impact? That's a bit leading, but um, yeah, four straightforward questions. And then I thought, as I sent them to the walkers, I was like, this shouldn't really come from me because I lead the walks. And as much as I can say in the email, please be honest, it's really important. Um, people, are, you know, sort of default to being nice, maybe. Uh, so I think done it, having done it, the next time I do it, I will um, ask them to send them to my colleague who works over in the Cardiff, you know, area so that it can be a bit more, um, yeah, in person, impersonal, whatever the word is, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, Joe Gossage, you've got a question? Yeah, me again, sorry. Um, just a quick one. The Active Travel Network map consultation is live at the moment. Um, the mapping is all all been split up into ward bases. It's available through the Newport City website. If you go on to traffic and transport and then on to um, active travel, it'll open the link there. So you just keep linking through. You have to do it, if you're on a computer, you have to do it through Chrome because otherwise the mapping for some reason doesn't upload. Lovely. If you, yeah, if you do it on your phone, it does. And you can, that statutory consultation is it's running till the 23rd of November. We hope we've picked up through the various engagement pro, uh, exercises this year all the comments that people want to make. We've had like over 3,000 um, people visiting the, the, the pages and putting comments on. There may be some that haven't have been missed, which in which case your group is you know more than welcome to identify. Uh, any of those and yet yeah, please you know make reference to them there may be some on there that the, you know that you've noticed like drop curbs are needed or whatever it may be and yeah it might be on there and you can say yeah that's great support it and please do this because we walk down here every every week or every other week or whatever it is um in addition to that if there's anything that the group flag up in the immediate term or through these um, audits that you're doing, mm -hmm. please get in touch straight away because we do have core allocation money, which we can do quick wins. Yep. Obviously, if it's something a bit more complicated, it'll take some time. Yep. But if it's like a quick win thing, like it's just something that needs to be resolved and we can get on and do it. 
within a couple of months yeah we can just flag it up because that's yeah. it's the best way of us understanding what what people need um so yeah that's, that's lovely yeah. thank you and your job type are you service manager environment and yeah. leisure at newport city yeah. council yeah yeah brilliant okay thanks and are you a joe or a joanne oh either i don't mind okay all right thank you <laughs> great to meet you great thank you uh, I've just popped the link to the Act of Travel Network map review in the in the chat for, for everyone on the group as well. Um, Thank you. you can help help share it. Um, you know, or you know, obviously take a look at it uh, yourself. So that's uh, in the chat there. Um, Kirsten's just asked for your email address as well, Laura. That's okay. Just typed yeah. in. Great. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a flyer of the walk the weekly walks as well. Shall I? Can I? Give that to you, Harriet, to yeah. distribute if that's all right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, pop that to me and I'll um, send it out with the sort of follow up email after this. Super, thank you. Great. OK, thanks, everybody. Um, so, yeah, we'll just move on to the next uh, talk. To, to the next uh, presentation now. Um, so we've got um, uh, Claire from Bug Life is going to tell us a bit more about Bug Life itself, but also about um, the potential for a new pollinator project. Um, so if that's okay with you, Claire, I'll hand over to you now. Thanks, Harriet. I'll just, uh, I've got a few slides, so I'll just try and uh, share my screen, you know. Um, bear with me. Ooh. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Great. OK, cool. So um, I'm Claire Dinham. I'm the Wales manager for Bug Life Cymru. And thanks very much, Harriet, for um, inviting me along to, to speak today. So what I'll do is I'll just give you a bit of an introduction to, to Bug Life. And then I'll tell you a bit about some um, some projects that I think may be uh, relevant to, um, to the network and to, to Newport. So um, Bug Life, we're a an insect conservation charity um, dedicated to the conservation of all invertebrates. Um, we started in 2002, so in the grand scheme of things, quite a fairly young charity. Um, we've got presence across all of the UK and here in Wales, we're a team of um, three based in South Wales. In terms of what we get up to, um, as a small NGO, it's quite, um, quite broad, really. Um, uh, surprisingly in some cases. So we do conservation projects on the ground, um, raise awareness about invertebrates, do a lot of campaigning. So some of the campaigns, you may have seen recently the Bugs Matter campaign, which was a, um, a sort of sticky, um, sorry, it's like a, what should I say, license plate on your car. And then you, at the end, you have like a bug bugometer and you see how many bugs have splatted basically. So I don't know if you've seen in, um, in the news about all the reports about you know invertebrate declines and you hear these anecdotal stories about years ago how windscreens would be covered in in bugs but now it doesn't really happen so the bugs matter campaign was something that bug life did in partnership with some of the wildlife trusts so it's just trying to get people uh, interactive doing something simple that they can um they can easily achieve to, to look at populations of, of invertebrates and how they're doing uh, we've got a no insectinction campaign, uh, which is a public facing campaign around raising awareness again about about invertebrates, about ha you know, them having room to thrive. So having um, connectivity and, and appropriate habitats across our landscapes, having space, uh, safer spaces for invertebrates. So that's things around um, awareness of invasive non native species the use of pesticides and pollution, and then also friendlier relationships with invertebrates, which again is a lot about just, you know, shouting out about bugs and, and you know, why they're important, because not everyone's cup of tea, which is absolutely fine, but um, but it's just it's just good to raise raise the awareness that, you know, they're essential for our, our food chains, for pollination, for, you know, healthy soils, um, you know, a, a vast variety of things. Um, another one we got ongoing at the minute is Pot Watch, which is around the movement of of plants across well, across the globe, really, um, and some of the some of the issues that brings. So one of the main things we're trying to flag up at the minute is the importation of of, um, of flatworms, and trying to promote um, you know purchasing um, plants uh, and the soils that they come with at that sort of local uh, level, as opposed to imported uh, materials. 
And then at the UK scale, we've got a couple of national schemes. So we've got important invertebrate areas, which is very similar to if you've heard about important plant areas or bird areas, but it's basically flagging up some of our most uh, important and special sites for uh, invertebrates across the UK. So in Wales, we've recently gone through a process um, of mapping our important invertebrate areas at that fine scale level. So that's now been completed and we'll be publishing that on our website in the coming weeks. And that's something that can be used by, um, well, by all partners, stakeholders, um, even members of the public if they're interested. It's important for planning and development to know where our most uh, important sites are and what those, those key species are. Because otherwise that information doesn't really, um, doesn't necessarily get out there. And then another key initiative that we have, which I'll talk about a little bit more um, when, when we talk about the projects, is Beelines. So Beelines is a landscape scale connectivity initiative uh, for pollinators. Again, it's UK wide and we've gone about mapping this at a regional level. So in Wales, we did it over a period of about a year and a half doing it in, in sort of chunks. We did West Wales, South Mid, um, and then North Wales, working with a wide variety of partners and stakeholders, local record centres, um, held a bunch of workshops uh, with, with partners, you know, who know their patch on the ground very well. Uh, and that helped us then to create these, I guess like, I like to see or think of beelines as sort of pollinator um, motorways, which then, you know, are really essential then to be connected up to our a roads, B roads and paths and tracks and things. So it's just a sort of key connectivity route. And that's not to say anything outside of it isn't important, but it's just channeling our our efforts are, and restoration to uh, try and create resilient networks of pollinators really across Wales and and across the, the UK. And we we are delivering and leading on projects as Bug Life, but we've also got partner organisations who are leading on on projects as well to deliver within the Beelines network, which which is really great. So um, I'm just going to highlight two projects which may be of interest. Um, you may have heard of Natter and Bith. Um, so Natter and Bith is a um, it's a huge brand new project, a National Heritage Lottery funded project involving ten different organisations. So it's Natural Resources Wales and then nine uh, NGOs. Um, I probably won't be able to remember all of them, but aside from Bug Life, we've got organisations like Bumblebee Conservation Trust, Amphibian and Reptile Conservation, Bat Conservation Trust. Um, RSPB, Vincent Wildlife Trust, and it's um, landscape scale habitat projects and also single species projects. So this is a big sort of six year, um, six year project. The one that will be of most interest to um, to yourselves in Newport is the um, the single species project based around Shrill Cardamy. So that project is being led by Bumblebee Conservation Trust, but as Bug Life, we are um, a partner within their, their project. So the Shrill Cardaby is our rarest bumblebee in the UK. There are five known populations, three of which are in Wales. So we've got um, South Pembrokeshire along the Castle Martin Peninsula, and then we've got um, around sort of the Kenfig area and Neath Talbot coastal areas. And then of course the Gwent Levels then is another key um, key stronghold for the Shrill Cardaby. So. So that project will be um, delivering for that species. So we've literally just as in the start of September started our development phase of this project. So there's an 18 month development phase. And if that's successful, we'll then move on to a four year delivery phase. Um, it's a national lottery project. So as well as you know the importance of uh, habitat work and species conservation is also a huge, um, huge element of this project is around community engagement and empowerment to take action for um, for nature at the local level. Um, oh, that would be easier if I just put up this slide as <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my brain with who the partners are. But you can see there who the, the 10 um, coal partners are. And then there's a huge list then of, of delivery partners as well. So this is going to be um, a really you know, significant project for for species recovery uh, in Wales that's that's just begun. And then over the past sort of uh, few months, I've been working with partners in in Newport to develop the uh, a Newport pollinator project. So uh, more specifically, that's been working closely with Newport City Council. So Lucy Arnold Matthews and, and Luke Stacey um, with Grant Wildlife Trust. I know Kathy's on the calls with the, the Stand for Nature Wales project in particular uh, with Harriet. Natural Resources Wales and Bumblebee Conservation Trust and others. 
So this is a pollinator specific project where we've identified um, four sites across the city. Um, so these are the road to nowhere down in Coid Kernu. Um, you may or may not be familiar with this site, but it's a site that's been subject to uh, huge amounts of fly tipping over a long period of time. A couple of the um, local community groups, particularly the Marshfield Magpies and Celtic Horizons litter picker groups, have been really instrumental in campaigning to get that, that area cleared. We're again, working with the council and others, that's now underway. Um, and adjacent to that site is um, some, some brownfield land, which is partially owned by uh, Newport City Council. Really nice brownfield habitat. So I think that's, that's a great area to, to involve in the project. We've also got um, Pill Mill at the community centre that's already been mentioned. So um, Harriet, um, uh, Lucy and I, as well as input from Cathy, been chatting to the, the uh, centre manager there. We're potentially looking at doing some wildflower enhancement or something similar, particularly within the, um, the raised bed areas right at the front of the, the community centre. So um, I'm aware that that type of thing has, has happened in the past, but was subject to sort of vandalism and you know, pulling shrubs and things out. Um, and I know the centre manager has had some, some issues with, with the sort of outside furniture, um, but they've had some um, outside uh, fencing installed and that sort of decreased the, those types of um, issues. So hopefully doing something around involving the local community um, and people who live in that particular area, getting involved in, in seeding or plug planting or, or you know, whatever it, it may be, will help build a bit of that, that buy-in as well as brightening up you know, the front of the centre and just making it a bit, bit more sort of um, visually attractive as well. Um, we're then also looking at St Julian's Local Nature Reserve, which is a really important site for um, quite a few uh, rare and uh, threatened solitary bees. And then also a site um, in Alterine called Barracks Wood, or it's locally known as the, the Tumps. Um, and that's a, a small uh, group. It's only a few few chaps have started up the Tumps Nature Restoration Group. Um, and they're, they're wanting to sort of um, broaden the, the, the appeal of the group, uh, work with local communities, do some habitat restoration on their patch, raise awareness of the, the wildlife that's there, and also tackle some, some local issues around things like litter and, um, and fly tipping as well. Um, and some of the things we want to do with that project is um, run some you know, volunteer work parties, some of the more sort of traditional habitat conservation type things, but then also because it's if we're successful, we've applied to the landfill tax fund. If we are successful, um, the maximum length of a project they will uh, fund is 18 months. So I'm very aware that it's it's a short term project. So what I see this project is doing is is providing, hopefully providing skills and support that we can um, you know provide to people who are who are interested and also engage some new audiences. That, that, and then that those skills can be retained and continue to be used. So we'd be running a series of training and workshops around um, invertebrates and identification, but also just some, you know, really fun, like fun blitz days and pollinator walks. We'll be doing some um, well-being walks with an external consultant who we've worked with on previous projects and some um, art and nature projects as well, which if, if it does go well, then that'll lead to um, an exhibition at the end of the project as well, using photography and art done by people who, who access these areas. Um, very mindful to try and make the project as inclusive as possible from, from an access point of view, from a language point of view, and uh, you know, ensuring that any activities, you know, no previous experience is needed and just, just get people out accessing their, their local sites. Um, we've done some community consultation as well with, with support of some of the local groups um, and you know, I think the road to nowhere is quite a, a, an interesting site. The, um, the consultation response is there, you know, in terms of do you access this site and why not? I mean, you know, the answer I guess is quite obvious in that lots of people won't go in there because they didn't feel safe um, due to the fly tip in. Um, but then, you know, posing the question, would you be interested in going there if that was being tackled or being seen to be tackled and would you be wanting to engage in you know x y and z um, classes or workshops and the vast majority of people really did and saw the potential in the site but just just you know just needed that that sort of um for things to be started and, and get going so so we we hopefully um through working in in partnership with with communities and our more sort of formal partners 
just want to be able to provide support really um, and guidance to help people get on and, and you know raise awareness of their sites and feel more confident in you know identifying species and and and, and those types of activities so that's that's what the project is about we're also trying to engage sort of more 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 widely. So, um, as I mentioned, we've been we've been in touch with with Kathy, who runs the Stand for Nature Wales project in Gwent, which is around engaging young people um, in sort of climate change and, and nature conservation. She's very kindly helped us in terms of some some consultation work there and speaking with with, with young people. Um, we've been chatting with the Alzheimer's Society. I've tried to make contact with the um, ethnic and youth support team in Wales and Newport Mind, just to sort of you know try and engage and make the project as as sort of open to as as broad a group of people as possible, really. So um, so we've we've put our funding bid in, and if we're successful, we'll find out at the end of of next month so um if that is the case then it would be great via this group and harriet if you know i could share that information and that anybody who wanted to know more about the project or ran groups which which may be interested which hopefully hearing previous talks it seems like there would be then it would be great to um to be in touch um i'm just having a look now i think that's probably most things i wanted to say and i know harriet you were sort of interested in how it how this project um, may engage with the um, the steps in the green and safe network. So I think sort of there's some clear links with step one around enhancing and increasing um, habitat connectivity across Newport, tackling tackling some anti-social issues around fly tipping. Step two, you know, really involving communities and and supporting them to to take ownership, and then step three around um, providing volunteer. Um, opportunities connecting people with like nat nature, arts, heritage, and culture, and then also hopefully more more partnership work in um, as Bug Life. We've been working in Newport as part of the the um, the RSPB's big Living Levels project, but outside of that, we've not done too much in Newport. So this project, even the development work of the project, has has helped us to make loads and loads of connections. So I'm really crossing my fingers that the bid is successful. But if it's not, I think I've made some really good, you know initial um partnerships and links that we can go on and you know work together in the future so yeah that's me thanks very much fantastic thank you claire that was really um really informative thank you and yeah really interesting we hope you also are successful in the uh, in the bid for the project so it would be great but as you say you know if not you've made lots of connections across across newport so hopefully perhaps something else um but uh, you know, if not successful, but hopefully you are. Um, but yes, you share share anything, any information with me, and I can share it out uh, with the network following this. Um, has anyone got any questions at all? Um, I'll just check the chat while you're having a bit of a think. Um, I've just shared Bug Life Cymru website in the chat, and um, Suzanne from Gavo has just mentioned. Um, Beth Ann from Gavo would be keen to be in touch um, regarding sort of community engagement. Oh, okay, great. And um, yeah, hopefully, obviously, the rest of this network can can help with um, uh, you know sort of social media or sort of you know promoting it, it, it that way. But um, so, did you say um, was it October, early October? You'd find out, or I think it's the end of October. End of October. Yeah, so I shall uh, I shall let you know. Not too long to wait, but it's long enough. <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah fab okay thank you um is there any other questions at all for claire that's fine oh yes laura hi there um well, just thinking about the social media and helping sort of promote that how is the best way what's your um have you got project hashtags or such like um, at the minute, we don't have a specific project hashtag just because we're not sure if it's a go yet. Yeah. It's, a yeah. bug, it's at Bug Life Cymru. Um, but then, yeah, if if we do get the green light, then we'd uh, yeah we'd we'd run that run that hashtag for sure. Um, and yeah, perhaps there's some scope to to link up with what what you were doing in in Pill. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. Super. Just one more question, Claire. Is um is the Natir Ambeth project is that something to be promoting as well or is there something we could do around that but perhaps we would chat outside but um yeah. yeah for sure i would say the 
Um, the most relevant project was the one I um, mentioned, which is led by Bumblebee Conservation Trust. So um, it certainly would be useful to promote. I would just recommend the best person to contact there would be Sinead Lynch at Bumblebee Conservation Trust, as they'll, she'll be the person uh, leading that that project. But I just wanted to mention it because it was it was relevant to Newport. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, I'll um, get in touch with Sinead. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, so we'll just. Um, so we move on to the next presentation. So that's from, uh, we're going to hear from Newport Live. Um, so Carl Reed is going to tell us more about uh, you know, Newport Live's activity over the summer. They've been very, very busy with um, activities and events, in particular in uh, sort of outdoor settings like green uh, parks and green spaces. So uh, if I'm able to hand over to you now, Carl. Yeah, that's fine. Can you see that screen? Yes, yeah. Thank you. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, so it's, um, I'm Carl and I know a fair few uh, people on the call. Um, so we're, we're Newport Live, um, a charity um, linked quite closely with uh, Newport City Council and Public Service Board Partners. And my area of work within Newport Live is. Um, the, all of the community side of, of what we do, um, as well as Newport Live with our leisure facilities and the Riverfront Arts and um, Theatre. Uh, so I'll just run through a couple of things really, just, just what we've been doing over the summer and, it, and as I say it has been on, on um, parks, green spaces, wherever we've been able to get to. So our, our sort of vision anyway is inspiring people to be happier and healthier, um, so we're doing a lot of work in all sorts of communities um so like i said earlier it's within our less facilities but the community side of it would be would be in children's nurseries and uh, primary schools secondary schools um across then um, youth and community centers programs around um families and, and parenting youth engagement health and well-being programs around um, linked to family first so, so things around um obesity and parenting uh, smoking, drugs, alcohol, and mental health. And then we do more traditional sports development type work, which is working with um, sporting pathways, which would be children uh, have an opportunity to play sport or physical activity, and then having a pathway to progress um, or participate uh, as long as possible in their life. Um, we do a lot of work around tackling inequalities. So work with ethnically diverse communities, um, disabled children and adults and families and uh, target work around um, girls participation um, and then also like LGBT groups and then as well as that in Newport Live we have an arts development um, side of the organisation linked to the theatre, um, much smaller team but we support them with a lot of the work that we do so there's, um, I always say is if it was a, a group of, of young people and we were working with them around youth engagement whatever floats their boat we'll have a go at engaging them with that so if that's music if it's football if it's dance it doesn't really matter too much albeit um, a lot of our work does tend to be physical activity and sport mm -hmm. um so over the over our programs some of the work would be at the younger stages is is like physical literacy um so that would be in in nurseries or with flying starts and then into the younger stages at primary school so that's just um kids learning how to, uh, before they play sport, learning how to throw, catch, jump, run, and trying to get an equal footing so that children at different primary schools and different areas all come to second school and high schools at ideally the same sort of levels as they would in any other subjects. Um, we do a lot of work around developing young people. So um, we've got programmes of alter alternative education, referrals linked to community safety, linked to um, schools and, and the Bridge Achievement Service, the pupil referral. Um, units and then we also have kids who come directly out of secondary schools and a lot of that is about at whatever level they're at is working with them in a one-to-one -one or a mentoring capacity and supporting them to either have a pathway into becoming a coach themselves or volunteering or helping them on their pathway maybe to university but similarly it might be about them staying in education around getting basic qualifications around like ASDAN levels rather than um, where they might be struggling in, in, a, in a secondary school setting. Uh, some of that is getting younger and younger, so we are doing work with primary schools as well around early intervention work. Um, we work with Family First, have done for seven, eight, nine years, uh, however long that's been going for, 
um, and the space panel. So we receive referrals there around health and wellbeing and families who um, need support around might be mental health, could be around activity, <laughs> just different things. Um, did have lots of cooking and eating programs in in um, in schools and community centres. So we work with neighbourhood hubs, and then pretty much every school in Newport we work with in, in various capacities. Uh, a lot of work through positive futures programs, youth engagement, um, community safety. A lot of, uh, we got funding from the police crime commissioner for the work that we do with the positive futures program. And that's now a, re a regional program across Gwent. Um, and links off to serious organised crime and any early intervention issues that come with those those younger children um, linked to um, families in certain areas of Newport. And then, as I said earlier, the sort of tackling the quality side. And then how this fits to the group today, Green and Safe Spaces. So over the summer, we just, after lockdown and this past 18 months, the, we'd had some additional funding, but we were quite clear on what we wanted to do, which was um, to get out onto green spaces and parks. Um, we've done projects before, uh, like sport in a park events where we've done two or three of them in the summer and this year we just decided that we'd, we'd do a lot more uh, so we started like a pop-up sport event which would be uh, shorter than sport in a park so half a day and um, but getting across as many communities as possible on green spaces parks wherever we could could be the uh, grass space at a play, primary school area if there wasn't um, a community park area so we, we, we did that with basically trying to increase levels of physical activity um, get people active and support emotional well-being and mental health. Um, we also did some work around um, so children who were not on free school meals linked to food poverty. Um, so work with the council a, a, a couple of quid for some funding around that. We've done programs like Fit and Fed before in communities. So this was a way of trying to merge it all together. Um, so every child who came to um, one of our events got a free packed lunch, fruit, fruit and water, and those that really needed it the most, if I'm honest, were taking it away with them, and we, we have plenty there to for them to be taken home. Uh, I've so so it links really into getting more families out onto um, and local communities onto green spaces, spending time in green spaces short term, um, around health, play, recreation, physical activity. Um, Developing, there's an element where our arts team, we had funding through Summer of Fun to add to what we were already doing. So we just had funding really around um, the arts part of it. So again, it's developing and supporting projects which connect to nature and through arts and culture. And then long term, um, the local communities have access to local green spaces. So that's where I thought it sort of fitted in um, from, a, from your vision point of view. Um, we've engaged 6,000 people over the summer. So over the seven weeks of the summer, we did four sport and park events, which are full day events, um, which most of those events had about 850, 900 people um, attending. And then the smaller pop-up events um, were in were half day events. And through the Positive Futures programme, we also delivered the 25. We, we do these anyway, but they happened through the summer. So these were, we did a few extra areas such as Bellevue and Beechwood, where there had been issues identified to us through the community safety uh, an ASB group linked to the public service board. So we went and uh, worked with the youth service and youth offending teams to go in there. And then obviously the work around uh, the SHEP programme, school holiday enrichment programmes that the council are doing. We support that with some of our staff and coaches. Um, transition camps where we do work with, um, this year it was with two high schools, so the children transition from primary to secondary, do a lot of wellbeing workshops, sport engagement stuff. Um, and then the referrals continued all year round. The types of areas we've been into, which have been in green spaces, uh, uh, with like mainly primary schools, not a lot of green space in, in the mainly area. So we, we've got a good relationship with the school there uh, with various projects. Summerton, Mains Glass, uh, Ken Park on Corporation Road, uh, Pill Plainfields, Fields um, in Dufferin, Betis, Shaftesbury. Um, we went out to Underwood, which is an area that doesn't get too much um, happening over there, uh, using the school site. Um, we were at Rogerstone. I think we went to Ringland twice, Tradiva Park, Beechwood Park. So lots of places, Lisbury Pond. And then the type of these are all images from, from the events, but basically it was, um, we had some lovely feedback from parents. Everything was very, very positive. Um, I think just people appreciative of an opportunity to get out into green spaces. Um, and the kids, I think the nice thing that we saw was uh, children being able to um, play, um, seeing parents. So we, we would facilitate that and provide coaches to deliver tennis, volleyball, whatever it might be, football, bounce castles, but also it's nice seeing the parents who are, have the equipment there, have access to it, 
bit of guidance if needed, but just seeing them play. So it's just a love, nice thing to see. Um, this is just dodgeball before. I think they had a video of this before it went mental as the kids throwing the balls at each other. So, yeah, just kids getting out, families getting out together. That was at Trafalgar Park. We also engaged with a company called Forces Fitness through Summer of Fun funding. So they came to every event and they just offered something slightly different. So team building things, obviously um, the um, different activities like this. Um, and then we also had different services. So youth offending service were every event. Um, links into neighbourhood hub staff, links into arts development. Um, so every event had plenty on offer. And it just, as I say, it's aimed more at families, um, but you do get young people. So some some areas that we went to, we would the event would finish at four-ish, and then we'd have uh, maybe four, five o'clock-ish, we'd be then back in that same community using the same sort of equipment and staff, but we'd then engage at a youth um, intervention age, um, which we'd normally do through Positive Future. So we were able to do that. Um, especially at Trudeva Park, obviously they've got the Wheels for All um, uh, partnership there with the council where we've got uh, inclusive and adaptive um, bikes, which are available to book for, for families to use. Um, but all of our activities and all of our delivery, wherever we deliver it, is inclusive and staff are trained in engaging people with disabilities and, and uh, support. Park. This is in Ringland, so again, the staff, our staff, we do, we, we recruit older people, we recruit younger people, people from different communities, um, some are academic, some are not, um, and it gives us a real rich um, mix of staff who are, depending on what the setting is, they're, they're all able to engage, and I saw it first hand with speaking to little kiddies and, and engaging them and making it fun, speaking to different families and, and from different communities. Um, and also they can all they can engage with young people and, and are linked to that sort of antisocial behaviour um, side of, of what we do as well. So it was really really good to see the staff. And an, another part of what we do um, wasn't specific with the, these two young people, but we the, the ages then when we had thirteen and fourteen year old children, it's probably the youngest we would have who are on a pathway around sports leadership and and. Uh, volunteering who would be there as part of our our trained and qualifying staff we we do a lot of mentoring with young people so that they can referee and support activities and organize activities uh, and then they'll go on a pathway of qualifications to hopefully become sports coaches and uh, in the future obviously we provide information and signposting but there, there is something there around uh, like the community connectors do that sort of social prescribing to physical activity um, so we do, we do do that. This is some of our fitness staff who would be um, promoting some of the activities that are on in the new in, in Newport. It doesn't have to be in our facilities, just what's what's on in the areas. Like I said earlier, we, we gave out over fourteen hundred pat lunches, um, fruit, water to to lots of families. Lots of families were following us around. So at this event, which we think was up at um, at Underwood at Land Martin Primary School, there was families that were travelling. Um, from affluent diverse communities, but were travelling and following the event. Who were based in Dufferin, and were coming to most of them. So there's obviously a need for this type of thing. Um, the activities were all free, the events were all free, and uh, obviously the pack lunches were as well. Some of the youth engagement work we do through Positive Future. So I think I said earlier, but we were in on a regular basis. We're in uh, Ringland, Orway, Dufferin, Pill, um, working with various partners around the sort of work we're doing. There was a community cohesion cup as well with the police um, at the stadium at the sports village this, this summer. Really well. Um, just somebody, it wasn't all just sport. There are other activities and crafts and, and, and different artists that were paid for through the summer of fun funding who had different things coming on at, at each event just because it's something different. That was it, really. So it's just really an opportunity just to update on some of the more physical activity side and well-being side of um what we're what we're doing on on um green spaces it really amazing thank you carl that, yeah that definitely gives us a lot more insight into yeah like you say the recreation and play side of things out in our parks and green spaces so yeah amazing work you've done been very busy over the summer um it, you know so much considering you know obviously the last 18 months it's great to see and for people to have had that had that opportunity um yeah kids to get out and get out and about and play and 
uh, get outside. So um, it's just reminded me to sort of get in touch with maybe the art side of things, just linking this intimate, this this work with some of the art side. So I think I've got contact for that, so I'll do that. Um, and if anyone's got any questions at all for Carl, please uh, let me know. Um, I just wanted to mention as well, it's just interesting how it works in terms that some of the activities were sort of organised in response to some, was it community safety reports and things like that? Is that the case for some for some areas? Yeah. yeah, the guys, yeah, so some of the positive users staff sit on the um, ASB groups, I sit on Safe in Newport, um, and then we sit on like the pill operational groups around like, social behaviour. Um, so where the information feeds in, we would then respond uh, reactively where there are higher levels of social behaviour in, in areas. Um, uh, pretty much that happens quite regularly. We work with a couple of youth service staff linked to neighbourhood hubs and then youth offending, as I say, they come out on a lot of a lot of the work we do. So it's a partnership approach. Um, so yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I'm always sort of keen to hear about, um, you know, ways to sort of uh, tackle some antisocial behaviour, you know, how it works. So obviously that's a brilliant example of, of that. Um, has anyone else got any questions at all for Carl? Shabir just asked a question about is the Connect Centre open? Um, yes, it's okay. it's open, but it's a school now. So St Andrews School are based there and have been there for a good six months or so and will be there for probably um, potentially another year. Um, so we're not, the Connect Centre isn't open to the public. It's a it's St Andrews School are based there at the moment whilst their building's being being um, reviewed. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, just to, I was just scrolling through the chats as well. Just um, just Estelle from the East Hubs, just uh, obviously keen to link with Living Street and Bug Life. But I think um, I'm sure you'll make those connections, or I can help help do that afterwards. Um, but yeah, really good to see you know all the partnership work going on. There's, there's so there's so much, and it's uh, you know loads of links between nature and uh, you know getting outdoors with all sorts of other things. You know, it links to well-being, it links to art, culture, history you know exercise and sport cooking healthy eating tackling some antisocial behavior so it's yeah it's amazing to see um our speakers today sort of cover cover all of that in such a such a broad range um kathy just mentioned you've worked as part of the uh, shep project this summer um in terms of the nature connection activities is that is that with, was that with newport live or was that a different different project sorry so it's through matthew Lease. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> the council, yeah, Matthew from the council, yeah. It's went down really well. I'm just saying to Carl, if you need us, let us know because we're trying to link with the sort of slightly older age group. So maybe even your youth leaders or anything, if they want to do some nature connection stuff, is there's anyone that's particularly interested or if you think it is useful to you, just let me know, okay? Great, thank you. Okay, so we'll just um, uh, if there's no more questions, or if you if you have if you think of some, just pop them in the in the chat. Um, but we'll just move on to the last part of the workshop today. So we're just going to look at any just exploring any support you might need. We touched on it earlier about some you know community engagement or comm support for each other. Um, but is there any anything else that we can think of in terms of are there any barriers that you're coming across? That perhaps somebody else from the network could help overcome or have you got any funding opportunities to share with others um so i'll open it out to the group now um so if you've got anything else if you can think of in terms of, yeah barriers or any other support you might need um please leave a share in the chat or you know open up your mic and and, and speak about that now Yes, Bridget. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I can just sort of start off by um, mentioning the upcoming participatory budgeting um, that's sort of coming up for Newport. Uh, I, I'm just sort of mentioning it um, because it's early days, but it's going to be fast moving when it starts. So although we haven't sort of set full criteria, um, we're still in the early days of um, forming a steering group um, and I can share some information on the steering group as well. Um, I don't know how many people were familiar with the recent um, participatory budgeting that we ran. Um, the idea is to um, fund some community groups for um, 
preventative well-being um, uh, COVID recovery projects. Uh, so I'm being really vague because, as I said, it's early days and we haven't, you know, the, the amounts haven't been finalised and the criteria is not yet finalised. But we'll be starting the steering group up in October and we'll be hopefully opening for applications in um, December um, with allocations in January and February. And there's a large amount. It's like it's looking like around 400,000 that's going to be up for grabs as well. So that's quite a lot of money out there. Um, it's likely to in you know, green and safe space initiatives will very likely be eligible um, in a COVID recovery. As I said, it's hard to say because I don't want to say criteria that haven't really been set. But um, when we're looking at COVID recovery, it's going to be well-being projects. So things that are going to um, promote health and well-being in the community. So community organizer groups specifically, that would be something, you know, we'd be looking at. If you've got a project that's going to be um, helping to people, helping to get people out and about um, and promoting well-being, then that's something that's likely to be eligible. So um, as I said, early days, I'm going to I'm still just sending around materials to um, get the steering group going. Um, but if you'd like to be kept informed, just send me your email address or contact details and I will make sure that I send you more information on the um, actual event and um, criteria as it comes out in the next couple of months. Um, and happy to answer any questions if you have them. As well. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Email address yeah. in the chat there. Great, thank you. And I can send out um, information by the network mailing list or as a follow up to this. But yeah, once uh, so we know more information, that would be great. And then, like you say, I think I think there will be quite a few, hopefully a few you know, green and safe spaces related projects and things Definitely. that could be eligible for it. Yeah, green and safe spaces are so important to COVID recovery. So yeah, um, it's definitely something that um, we'd like to get involved. Fantastic, thank you. Is there any anything else uh, that people would like to share? Any other sort of project updates as well? Any barriers, any uh, sort of communication support or anything like that? Okay, I've um, I've just popped um, in the newsletter just about the My Wild Newport hashtag. Um, if anyone wants to use that on social media, we're hoping just to get a bit more. I know there's a sort of equivalent in, in Cardiff about My Wild. Is it My Wild Cardiff Hour or something like that? But I just thought it's something maybe that we can pick up as a, as a network just to kind of, if you are on social media, it'd be something we could uh you know sort of tag all our work sort of together or if we can you know help sort of share any good news and projects and stuff across social media that'd be great um okay so if there's nothing sort of you know outstanding that you'd like to to share or any sort of barriers that are overcoming needs need to overcome at the moment um but if you do think of something obviously just remember that obviously the, the sort of big network of us that can sort of help support or uh, you know, we can sort of work together on those things. Uh, Marietta. Sorry, just one quick thought. I was just thinking I'm I'm just finishing off the um, rapid review of evidence around uh, barriers to access to green space. I was just wondering if I circulate it to this group, if, if you know, maybe if, if anyone's got time, you could give me any feedback on that. So I'm going to, if I send a draft round, if that's all right. Um, it's just like a rapid review, so it's not like a huge um, giant literature review, but um, that just would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I'll, um, yeah, yeah, you send that to me. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll send it out uh, via the network. And yeah, so that's about um, barriers to accessing green space, isn't it? So that's something. Yeah. Okay, fabulous. Thank yeah, you. That would be great. Thanks. Yeah, so, and that's the sort of thing, you know, we can do. We can just sort of, you know, if there's anything you want sending around to the network, do let me know. Um, so just just to touch on what we'd like, maybe like to see at the next uh, workshop. So we've just mentioned it mentioned earlier about diversity and inclusion in green spaces. I think making you know making green space more inclusive. Um, it was mentioned today how you know there's strides to sort of ma make uh, you know reach as a wider audience as possible in some of the projects we heard about earlier. Um, but yeah, if we can explore that maybe next time look at sort of identifying further barriers like 
you know, lack of confidence or sort of cultural perceptions, anything like that. I think that'd be good to do next time. Um, if there's anything else um, you'd like to see, so anything that springs to mind, you did mention perhaps someone from Flight of Action Wales to come and come and speak. Um, perhaps some breakout rooms, but if you you know if you've got ideas in terms of if that would suit better to sort of sort of you know go into breakout rooms um, into smaller groups to discuss things, happy, happy to do that. Uh, do let me know, or if we can look at more safety aspects um you know an update from other people in in the group but yeah if you'd like to present as well your project at the next workshop that'd be great to let me know about that um if there's anything else uh Harriet, at the moment yeah um it's neil it is from flight of Hi. action wales um when is the next meeting i haven't put it in yet um i was uh thinking about doing it towards the end of this year but it might be into into next year now um so it could either be I I'm, mean, I imagine it would be more helpful perhaps January February time for people I don't know if everyone agrees with that so sort okay of well then um, yeah. we we're shortly launching um the third round of our fly tipping campaign which will be a national campaign so um that might be quite a nice time for us to run everyone through that because there'll be lots of resources people can use um it will have launched by then we're be launching it later this month um, but we will, will be having a push from Christmas on to try and get you know more partners using the resources so if I'm more than happy to you know do a presentation on that the next one yeah brilliant that'll be that'll be fantastic thank you Great. um so I'll let you know when the next next one is but yeah that that's perfect that would be the sort of thing that we're we'd be looking to have at the next one great thank you okay so um if there's nothing else uh, that springs to mind at the, at the moment, um, I'll stay on the call um, for a bit afterwards if you'd like to ask any questions or if you've got any more more comments. Um, but yes, thank, thank you all for coming today. Thanks to our, our speakers uh, and, our, and our presenters. So really appreciated all, all your time. Hopefully it's, it's given you ways to sort of get involved and link up uh, projects and ideas across the network. Um, so I'll send out any information uh, following this um, and I'll send out the recording as well for those that want to recap or, or weren't able to make it today. Um, so, yes, our, our next workshop, I think then will most likely be into the into next next year. But as I say, the networks, you know, I'm able to send out things to the network. We've got, you know, a mailing list for us um, and there should be another newsletter coming out. So, yeah, any anyone's got any ideas for the next newsletter, do let me know as well. Um, but yeah, don't hesitate to get in touch with me in the meantime. Um, but yeah, thank you all for attending today. And we've oh, got Laura. Laura, go on before I wrap up. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, how often do your newsletters go out? Are they monthly or sort of three months or what? Yeah, quarterly. So every sort of three months. The next ones, I think November. Okay. But, um, awesome. Yeah. If Thanks. you've got anything for them, do let me know. Okay. OK, so if that's all, we've um, finished a bit early today, so that uh, gives you enough time for cups of tea for your next meetings. And um, yeah, thanks all for coming. So hopefully see you again next time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. Thanks, Harriet. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Harriet. Bye.